An excellent morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to all of you, and hopefully everyone enjoyed the reception last night and had a good night's sleep. This is just the introductory remarks prior to the opening of the General Assembly. I also thank our colleagues from IFCC for having given us such a warm reception, and to the musicians in the corner, plus the dancers, who, at, who were trying to convey a very meaningful message to all of us. If a colleague from IRCC would like to say something about what that dance actually meant, that would be great. But what I can say is, under the Hindu religion, when you have a blessing of flowers following a communication through body movement, that is a blessing for the event that is about to take place. I would also like to say thank you to the little presents that they have left for us on the table. If we have looked at them, a band of printed beautiful material wrapped up for the ladies is a sarong, but you can also use it as a wrap. You can, only, you can wrap it around your body, wrap it around your head. Do what you like with it, but it's a multi-purpose, multi-purpose uh, garment. Beautifully crafted, thank you again. And for the men, I see some of you are already wearing it. Excellent, please, full support. <laughs> That's called a soko in our in our uh, culture. But it's it's a male headdress. Our IFCC colleagues are also wearing that. That is a sign of uh, a respect to the masculine gender. Girls can wear it too, too. I can prohibit that. We promote gender equality. And we also have a pack of beautifully pressed white flowers, courtesy of. Did you live, board member, and Jen, would you like to say a few words as to what the significance is of this project of the calendars with the past project? Thank you. Hi, morning all. You would have seen your calendars. I think this must be the third or fourth year now, then. Yeah. At least three or four years right now. It's a very, very special calendar that's been handmade by the slum dwellers in the Philippines and there's also in, in Indonesia. It's because done by, it's, uh, the, the, we work with this organization called Care Channels and every calendar provides, every, you know, the families who do it, you know, with food on the table. So this is a very important project that PSC has helped every year for the last few years. And it's, um, it, it's unique. You can, you can see all those were, were uh, individually pressed and pasted a lot of loving care for our organization. So I'm really, really proud that uh, PSC has helped with this project for a number of years right now. Thank you so much, Jen. And the next item that you have found in, on of your, with your things or on your seats are the kites in the pack. They are kites if you haven't worked that way down. And for that, we have to be grateful to Hannah from Secretariat for having sourced it. Hannah, where are you? Thank you. Could you please say a few words on that? Uh, Label this morning. Thank you. So they're actually traditional Balinese kites. You can see the example there. Put together by the old man. So if you have any questions, you can ask him. <laughs> so it's made by a local craftsman here on the island, and it's made from bamboo. And you'll also see there's a little holder which is made from scrapwood. So I hope you like them and enjoy flying them on the beach. Thank you, Hannah. The shape of that kite is quite significant. It's quite significant to what we stand for. As you can see, it is a sailing ship. And what do sailing ships normally encounter? As they leave a harbor and get toward the next destination. You have a storm, you have the waves, you have the calm, you have the, the stagnancy, can I say? There are moments when there is nothing happening and we sit still, very much like the sailing boat. We also have challenges. So I, I find that analogy quite quite apt, quite apt for what we are here for. Yes, well, Jen just whispered, sail with the wind. Or you can sail against the wind. <laughs> There's many different interpretations as to what would be more comfortable. Right, let's get on to the next item. I would also like to express councils and the board, as well as Secretary as deepest sorrow at having lost two very dedicated members of council. One is Madame Christine on her sudden demise, and also for Signore Pierluigi Ferrari. 
these two individuals have been fantastic and excellent ambassadors as well as committed members of NGBs who have forwarded the interests of PSC, not just within their own constituencies, but also in neighboring constituencies. So um, I thought it was proper that we, we recollect what they have done, reflect on where we are, and we have to be conscious that sometimes things happen to us which we have no control over. But we cannot allow such matters to pull us back or drag us down. So with that strength, with that strength, we move on to the third um, little announcement that we wish to make to you prior to the start of General Assembly. Following from the discussions that we had yesterday afternoon, particularly in the members and board session, as your acting chair for this year, I will be recommending to the PLC International Board for its consideration on the establishment of a working group slash commission to look into our current funding mechanism and the funding structure. At this stage, I am not able to commit a timeline as to when the work of this working group or commission will be completed. So, informally, I'm informing you that I will recommend this to the board, so there's no uncertainty on that point. We are also certain that the working group will be established, and we aim to have something to report to all of you, at least the preliminary steps at the next member session in April, with a further aim of discussing more at the next General Assembly. Thank you. Thank you for that. And now can we can we move on to actually formally opening the General Assembly? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I announced that we have a total of 85 votes out of 119, so we have a quorum uh, for the General Assembly. Uh, 30 national governing bodies are represented at the, this General Assembly. Um, we have um, invited guests today from Mexico, Vietnam, the Republic of Congo, Romania, Nepal, the Philippines, and Thailand. Um, we have apologies from the uh, Board members, uh, Michael Hoffman Koscheck, Gabby Bully, Tita Kuniputur, Julian Walker Kalin, and Juan Carlos Gentian. National government bodies that are not present today have sent apologies, uh, including Hungary, Luxembourg, Ireland, New Zealand, Austria, uh, Norway, and Switzerland. We also have apologies from international stakeholders, AWM, which is the European Biomass Association. ETF, the Confederation of European Forest Owners, um, ETIDT, and the PWI, the uh, Building of the Workers International. Yes, I also have to uh, mention that one of our international stakeholder members is uh, unfortunately no longer uh, a member of the PSC Council, um, having been automatically excluded according to the statutes for not having paid the membership. Uh, for three months after the second year. That's our focus. Thank you very much, Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, can we now move to the first motion on adoption of the agenda for the day? The motion is to approve the agenda. Those in favor, can you please go to favor? And please hold your cards higher. Thank you. And if we show of hands, those against? Thank you. Any abstentions? Thank you, that was quick. Good, we're done with motion one. Thank you very much. Next motion is to approve the minutes of the 20th General Assembly held on Thursday, 10th of December, 
2015 at the Royal Plaza in Montreux, Switzerland, as a true and accurate record of the meeting. For those in favor, may I see your show of card, please? Thank you very much. Anyone against? Thank you. Any abstentions? Thank you. I like this. Good. Now, on the next item that we have on the agenda this morning will be a PFC verbal update by Secretary General Mr. Vandenberg. He will take you through the latest developments and what we aim to do and this could be good in Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I will try to do it as quickly as 20 minutes. I just need to ask um, who is actually in charge of the slides. I do not have to be Thank you. I'm um, going to provide you a quick overview of uh, 2016 and some of the talks that we're having for 2017, some of the issues that we're facing. So I'll cover a little bit about the growth of PSC 2016. Um, I'll highlight some of the work of PSC International as well as the national PSC members. And then I want to concentrate on three particular areas empowering <coughs> the, the network, uh, system scope, innovation, and increasing the impact of the PSC. And then I will close it tonight. And then I will um, uh, look, um, talk about priorities for 2017. But let's first of all have a look at the growth of the PSC. Um, Yesterday we had a session and we talked about um, the various growth of chain of custodies um, within the PFC. We've seen a growth in PFC uh, of 3.2%. Uh, That's similar to the growth that we saw last year. Um, and we're now covering over um, 18,000 uh, chain of custody um, certified sites. Um, just to put it into, put into context as well, our competitor, as we mentioned yesterday, um, has grown 6.95% uh, uh, over that same period of time. Um, last year, their, their growth was a little bit uh, slower. But if we look at the area, last year we only grew 1%, but this year we grew 12.97, so nearly 13%. Effectively, we grew by 35 million hectares. <coughs> That's a fairly significant growth, um, and uh, half of that alone was actually uh, in Australia. Um, so that's one of the largest areas of growth that we had last year. Um, with that into comparison with our competitor, our competitor grew 10 million hectares last year. That's 5.6, but that's up from 1% growth which they had the previous year. So what we've seen is, is that the areas of certified uh, forests are now uh, increasing again. Uh, uh, from the areas that we have with the PSC, many of those are new areas, um, and for our competitors, many of those are uh, double certification issues that we also covered yesterday. PSC grew as well in uh, its membership, and we saw new members coming in from Hungary, from Ghana, and from the Republic of Korea, um, taking us up to 43 members, and we also had um, uh, several new international stakeholder members, including the uh, Contractors Associ Association covering contract workers uh, in, in Europe. Um, also the uh, Connecting uh, Natural Values and People's Foundation, which you will call yesterday, uh, were introduced as being very active, uh, working with PFC in partnership, particularly uh, in, the, in, in, in the Balkans. Um, and of course then the uh, IBOM, which is the European Biomass Association, uh, and of course, uh, we also had, uh, with changes in company membership, uh, uh, Westrock was then accepted as a, as a new member within within PSC uh, since uh, there was a merger of two companies which uh, created the new Westrock. So that's a quick overview of uh, the growth figures. Uh, I will now quickly cover some of the areas which were there. There's no way that I can summarize the whole four hours of presentations which you saw yesterday from all of the units all of the work. So you have seen that, but just as a quick memoir, one of the key areas that we've been dealing with, particularly on the technical side, being the standards revision. Uh, we also saw uh, 10 uh, endorsements, re-endorsements of certification systems in Canada, Chile, Germany, Hungary, 
Japan, Netherlands, Norway, Russia, Slovenia, and uh, the US. We also saw uh, the successful launch of the South American Promotions Initiative, um, and also the launch of trading programs, which you got a lot of information on uh, and technical as well as marketing and uh, outreach, uh, PFC influencing fundamentals, uh, training for members, videos, and presentation materials from, from communications. There's been a lot of work on the uh, um, collaboration uh, between members, various collaborative clusters, and members starting their own collaborative clusters on audio, um, as well as the, the other clusters which were reported on uh, yesterday. And obviously, it continues to be a main key area for us, dealing in particular uh, with uh, procurement policies and ensuring that the PFC and all of its member systems continue to be accepted uh, in uh, the key procurement policies um, which, which uh, are fundamental for our customers to ensure that they have uh, global access and global uh, access to trade. Other areas that we've been uh, working on, um, Sarah gave a presentation yesterday on uh, a range of the initiatives in Asia and Africa and in the Balkans, uh, in addition to the South American promotions launch. And again, for the South American ones, we want to particularly thank the PSC uh, Spain, who have done a lot of the coordination work for PSC International on that one, as well as, of course, all the participants uh, in the uh, initiative itself, which is focusing very much. Uh, on, on marketing issues. Um, what that means is, is that we have to keep moving. We have to be aware of what is happening out there and we should be thinking about our customers, whether it's within the forest, whether it's along the supply chain, uh, whether it's politicians, whether it's governments and so on. How can we best service? How can we best make sure that we are staying very relevant uh, to um, the developments which are taking place in society. Uh, and that is a very key area that we, we, we need to uh, think about because sometimes people get concerned about change. Um, and what I would say is we should not be frightened of curiosity. Curiosity is a good thing. We should explore. We should not be frightened of exploring. We should enjoy the alchemy of coming up with new ideas and coming up with new innovative products and ways of ensuring that we promote the vision of a world in which we can manage forests sustainably. And remember that when you do that and when you are concerned, please have faith in the federal structures and the safeguards which we have within the federal structures. When we look at new issues, when we talk about new issues, we should look at them with a curiosity, with a willingness to learn, to become a learning organization, but ultimately, it will be you, the members, who decide where this organization is going, what we take on board, and what we don't take on board. So, Romania is a member of the EU since 2007. It was the 27th member country of the Union. In the government structure for Romania, the forests are coordinated by the Minister of Environment uh, in the Forest Department. In the field, the most forests are managed by uh, forest districts, compulsory based on forest management plans for the properties larger than 10 hectares, and they are supervised by control, and controlled by the forest guards. Romania has an area of near 7 million hectares of forests, as of the forest inventory data from uh, 2011 from which uh, are uh, half private and half state. Before 1919 was 100% state forest, resulted from the nationalization of forests from uh, 1948. The restitution process is not finished yet, even after 25 years. The private ownership is composed by private persons' forests, 10%, undivided community forests, 15%, municipality forests, 15%, and other forests, 10%. The rest of 50% are state forests. The forests are composed by uh, softwood and broadleaf species, one-third and two-thirds. Most important broadleaf species 
beech and oaks and softwood spruce and fir. Romanian, Romanian forest legislation, legislation is very complex and restrictive based on the forest law from 2008 modified in 2015. Since 2008 is in place an electronic log tracking system called SUMAL and from 2014 an extension in the form of the smartphone app. After two tries to establish PSC standards, the present one is the third and the most successful started in 2012 by the largest forest owners federation, Nostra Silva. The process was supported financially by the Swiss collaboration fund between Romania and the Swiss federal government. Without that, we could not succeed. Respecting the standard setting toolkit, starting from mapping stakeholders to the public debate and uh, standard testing, we are now through that process as uh, a new organization, the national governing body, the NGB, from Romania, SPFC Romania, which uh, aims to become and uh, is become today through a consent member of the PFC Council. We hope that at the end of 2017, we will have the Romanian PFC standards endorsed and the first forest certified in early 2018. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Romania. Next, may I invite the delegate from <coughs> Thailand, Madam Dean Jai? Please go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and also good morning about PFC. Uh, on behalf of the Federation of Thai Industry, who organized TFCC or Thailand Forest Certification Council, I hereby express my appreciation on the board's valuable vote for TFCCs to be the members. Through this precious effort, I declare my gratitude to many supporting parties who have initiated and emphasized the importance of the sustainable forest management and the board certification system in Thailand. They are the Thai Industrial Standards Institute, or we call TC. The Faculty of Forest at the Sun University, the Royal Forest Department, the Federation of Thai Industry, and the stakeholders who share the same missions. Moreover, the PEFC officers who have been monitoring and supporting both in knowledge and information for many years in Thailand. Thailand is one of the prominent food and wood related products exports <coughs> in South Asia. However, we are in infant state and uh, also well, we are in the infant states of implementation for the sustainable forest management and we need a lot of advices and support from you all. There was the development of the Sustainable Forest Management Standard by the TISI, so Financial Standards Institute, in the year 2004, due to the complicated local forest plantations and the tax differentiation. The development to bring down time and James, it brought us to one thing, uh, to think about the concern on the trees outside forests. Recently, upon the mutual efforts amongst our parties, as I mentioned before, we developed the revised versions and renamed Sustainable Forest Plantation Management Standard, which be applicable to all forest plantations at the moment as majority. To drive standard to international recognition, we prepared the students to be qualified for the PEFC's endorsement <coughs> division. It will be the key successful 
to activate the future sustainable forest in Thailand and also as a part of the world. The FTC is organized under the FTI or the Federation of Thai Industry. It is the non-profit entity who emphasizes <coughs> sustainable forest management and utility for product supply chains in Thailand. Our mission starts now and today we will make it as a world first milestone. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you very much, Madam Kim Jang. The family gets warmer and warmer, it's great. <laughs> we have had a couple of new members elected into the PFC family through the year via postal ballot. Now, may I inform General Assembly that Ghana and Hungary are not here, but our representative from Korea is. And he has requested whether he be given the opportunity to speak. And I now invite Mr. Ogopon from Korea. Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here and have a chance to introduce the Korean case. As you know, so Korea become new member June of this year, and we did many things regarding this uh, forest certificate. First, we formally designate the certific certification body this year, and endorse number one for the private the forest and working on the endorse the COC product. I would like to share the, our difficulties or challenges regarding this PFPFC project. First one is the private sector, they don't have much interest in this uh, PFC the scheme or system because even though they uh, attend this program, they don't have any benefit from this project right now. So I guess this the problem is the, the, the common problem in the world, I guess. So we Koreans maybe try to our best to find new business model for giving them some benefit, benefit attending this project. The second one is the government only support the national forest land. They have some budget for paying certification fee, the national forest land, but not for private the forest land. So our future uh, lesson or task is to make some legal basis <coughs> to support the private forest land. And we also thinking about the link, so-called the forest carbon offset program with this uh, forest certification the scheme. The forest carbon offset program is that the government uh, endorsed the forest owners activities for observing or storing the carbon dioxide through the, the forest. Then their carbon made by forest management, they can be traded outside the, the forest sector. So we encourage the forest owner who attend during this forest certificate, certification, then also attend the forest carbon offset program. Then maybe they have some benefit to both the program. And second, we also apply the mutual recognition for near next year, then please help Korea to get the mutual recognition soon. And finally, I'm to start my work this August. I'm here the first time, so I'm not ready to share experience, but maybe in the future, please help us to make succeed with this program. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, PFC Korea. We have the president of the Indonesian Forestry Certification Corporation here, Pat Rajat Vigoro, who would like to 
um, expand a few words for you. And may I invite Pak Dajat now, Pak Dajat Nuhu Mbak Nidhi Bersilakan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lushan. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I hope today will be uh, very good sunshine. And I think Ross suggests that we finish the meeting earlier so that everybody can have a tan and spa. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's good. On behalf of ICC, I'd like to uh, welcome you all to Bali. Actually, uh, we greeted you uh, with a large welcoming billboard just outside the uh, airport. But on Sunday, I learned that Ben and Michael didn't see the billboard. I was so, so, so totally heartbroken because of that. At the elite level, our work has already been acknowledged. When Ben and Thorsten uh, asked me if we can invite a high level government official, I contacted the, uh, the vice president, uh, Mr. Muhammad Yusuf Kala, and on the 2nd of October 2016 at 9.06 a.m., the vice president called me and told me that uh, he will attend our general assembly. And the VP asked me, Rajat, does your certification cover only SFM for commercial trade? Or does it include carbon certification scheme to mitigate climate change? I replied, uh, we have yet to cover climate change certification, sir. But, uh, and then he said, uh, can you do it for our country in the future? Well, I said, of course, sir, we can do it uh, in the future, but I will have to talk to Ben afterwards. <laughs> and the chairperson afterwards. Uh, unfortunately, two days later, the PP's office told us that uh, the PP has to represent president to the APEC summit in Lima, in Peru. Uh, which is to be held uh, in this week. Uh, the PP instructed the Minister of Environment and Forestry to, uh, to attend our GA, but the Minister had to leave for Marrakesh from the 12th of November. So I asked Ben and Thorsten, uh, what is the key goal for having a high-level official? Is it for media coverage? And I told them that, well, if that is the case, we can have very intensive media coverage with uh, uh, the officials. So we now have uh, Tribun Bali as our media partner. Uh, every day, every day we, uh, from Monday until Friday, uh, Tribun Bali will publish our interview and news. And already appeared on Monday. And yes, uh, we had been on Tuesday, see, uh, in this very smart suit. A far cry uh, from Ben when he arrived. Uh, because when Ben arrived, uh, I see Ben in tongs and one dollar anchor piercing match uh, on Sunday. I should, the, uh, I should stress the words beer and one dollar because when I saw the photo, I thought Ben uh, was a yoko without a meat pie. You know, in Australia, yoko usually have a beer on the right hand and meat pie on the left hand. <laughs> so, uh, our Australian friend uh, would know that. Uh, that uh, our chairman will appear in tomorrow's edition, uh, and on top of that, uh, we will have a press conference soon. We bring Jakarta's journalists from three most read national media, and a copywriter who will publish our news in 10 to 15 national media in Jakarta. And of course, uh, plus some TV media and also some Bali media. ICC has begun to invest early in our image and brand. Honestly, uh, I'm of the opinion that uh, we are lagging behind FSC in this area. Yes, we don't do pushing, picketing, blackmailing, and so forth. My apology for saying that, uh, but that's the truth. But we need to do something to make up the gap. RCC will do our part by marketing our skins and logo more, aggress more aggressively, especially in uh, this region, especially in Indonesia. And please look at this photo. Uh, you, you can see this photo. Um, Ultramic from Nestle has an FSC logo on it. So are many other uh, Nestle's uh, producers. Its competitor in Indonesia, Indomilk from Indofood, uh, one of Indonesia's largest uh, conglomerates, has no SFM logo. So there are potentials for our scheme and brand. Indonesia is my home. I will not ICC and PFC losing all the time in my home ground. So we will uh, we will uh, fight hard to make up uh, to make up the gap. We already made a small but important progress in this area. 
The media, the largest printing, bookstore, and media conglomerate in Indonesia, is now EFC certified, albeit for its magazine printing only. Air Asia, the largest budget airline in Asia, has now had its in-flight magazine PFC certified. You can see that uh, that's Air Asia uh, magazine. And please remember that Air, Air Asia carried 50.7 million passengers in 2015. So uh, we have started here in Indonesia, but there are still lots of hard work to be done. Finally, please enjoy the sunny, exotic, romantic Bali. And uh, if you bring your spouse, uh, take it as, uh, as a second honeymoon. Have a couple spa. A couple spa is very, very fantastic. I have it with my wife too, so it will be very, very good. Yeah? I hope Bali will become one of the, million, the milestones in cementing our position as the world leader in SFM certification. And please, please, please stay sober in Bali. Thank you. Terima kasih Pak Rajat. Thank you for that very inspiring um, speech. You see, whenever somebody tells you to do something, sometimes they actually mean the opposite. So when he said, please, please, please stay sober in Bali, I don't think that's exactly what he meant. So that's your prerogative. Now let's move on. The next chapter that we need to consider now would be the uh, election <coughs> of the chair, vice chair and members of the board. Kit Prince, who is a member of the Nominations Committee, was meant to have called in to present the Nominations Committee's report to members of the General Assembly, but I have been informed that there is a problem with the, with the polling system. So, in order not to lose time and in order not to um, be able to proceed with this agenda item, I call upon then Secretary General of the Secretariat to present on behalf of the Nominations Committee. Ben. So, the Nominations Committee, um, you've got the report in front of you. One of the uh, key things uh, of any organization is when it has a, a Nominations Committee, it provides a report on um, the selection processes, some of the experience learned in the sec selection processes, um, and provides some information and some advice and then makes the recommendations to, to the to General Assembly um, uh, on, on, on candidates. It's a, a report which comes uh, direct to you as, as members from the Nominations Committee. Um, and uh, so this is uh, directly from the Nominations Committee which comprises, comprises Kit Prince, uh, Dr. Kozaila and uh, Chris Davidson. They were um, elected by the annual, uh, annual uh, general meeting uh, <coughs> unanimously to uh, carry out procedures in uh, guideline three, which is the nominations for the election of the council chairman, vice chairman, and members of the board. As you know, that particular process is one where every single year the uh, nominations committee is elected uh, to, to uh, consider applications which come in from the members directly to the nominations committee and the Nominations Committee looks at the composition of the board, uh, the challenges which the organization is faces, uh, facing, and then uh, uh, puts together what it feels is the most appropriate slate to uh, move the organization in the best interest of moving the organization uh, forward. So one of the duties of the Nominations Committee is also to prepare a report on the proposal for the various positions and vacancies for the General Assembly, and that has been circulated with uh, the, the, the papers for uh, the General Assembly in advance. General consider considerations are, of course, that you have a, a whole range of um, uh, requirements, but you want to have a, a dynamic and balanced board. Uh, there are, of course, various uh, official requirements which are within the, within the statutes, supplemented by some more informal requirements which we refer to in the guidelines, such as Agenda 21 and having an appropriate representation and balanced representation. Other organizations do this um, by, by sectors. The sectors that we use are the uh, nine major groups of uh, the United Nations Agenda 21. Um, there are the formal requirements, and then we have some other uh, formal requirements with, within the statutes, and of course the, gu the guidelines which have been approved by members. The skill set requirements are reviewed on an annual basis. 
candidates must have integrity, be dynamic, committed, and active. And strategic thinking and demonstrated leadership skills are uh, crucial. The various uh, groups that the nominations committee focused on for the election for this year were category one, indigenous peoples, category two, forest owners, category three, brand owners and retailers, and then also buyers, uh, traders and buyers. Those were the, the, the four categories. Um, when uh, the nomination committee itself received one nomination for the chair, one nomination for the first vice chair, and eight nominations for five uh, positions uh, on the board. Um, you will see in your report also that some of the positions, some of the terms are longer, and some of them are short, some of them are two-year terms, some of them are three-year terms. And you may wonder why that, that is. One of the key aims of the nominations committee is to ensure that there is a uh, regular turnover um, for a three-year period so that one-third of the board changes every single year. Um, what had happened over the years was that if somebody retired early, and we have, have an example this year where one of our board members um, has uh, um, resigned the position um, because uh, they were uh, representing um, labor issues, but they have now become um, in a situation where they're no longer representing labor issues. Uh, we were actually having some situations where you could get up to five, six, uh, sorry, six, seven, or even eight candidates changing at one time. So what we've done in the, in, in the last year when we changed the, the guidelines is to make sure that we're always talking about the terms. There's always five terms. And uh, as you'll see, for example, in this year we did not have, uh, in the past we did not have a, a chairman, so the chairman position is only a two-year term in order to keep within that rotation, regular rotation of five uh, places uh, every single uh, year. So the nominations committee uh, considered all the candidates, bearing in mind the list of criteria uh, outlined uh, previously. You've seen in the report, post candidates are uh, Peter Latham uh, to become chairman. He's uh, there uh, also representing traders and buyers. Uh, Natalia Hufnaga Jovi to, to uh, um, be the first vice chair for forest owners. Those were the two positions where there was uh, one uh, nomination sent in with uh, lots of letters of support. Thank you very much for your support. I think that elections now are always a bit uncertain. One just has to look at the UK Brexit vote, or indeed the election in North America. And the only comparison I'm making is that the outcome is never absolutely certain. So thank you very much. Any other comparison is um, coincidental. Um, I start by thanking Natalie and Sean for the work that they've done for PFC during this year. It's an organization that needs leadership and they have led both the board and the organization as a whole extremely well and I'd ask you to show your appreciation. Now I have a risk of repeating what Ed has said both today and yesterday, so I will do so, but only very briefly. And as Ben has pointed out, we've really been through a very successful period as an organization, particularly in terms of growth of forest area, in terms of growth of new members, also in terms of acceptance of PEFC in public procurement schemes. And these are very important areas, and we should congratulate ourselves. But, of course, we also face challenges. And Ben has mentioned the challenge of increasing our number of chain of custodies. And I think this is particularly important because we have seen in PFC a policy of trying to shift the funding away purely from the forest owners to the supply chain through chain of custody. And we can only really see that as a success when all our national governing bodies are viable. And perhaps we discuss a lot 
the contributions of the big successful members. But we have challenges with new members coming on board and what their funding model is going to be for the future. But I think also of concern is actually the funding model of some of the members who've been in PFC for a long time and actually find it difficult to make that work. Part of that is perhaps their business model. Part of it is actually a challenge for us in PFC of demonstrating the value that timber certification adds to the supply chain. And it's one thing, you know, we all sleep very well at work at night because we do a wonderful thing, we protect our forests. And that is good. But we also have to make that add value through the supply chain or we cannot fund what we do. So that is one of the challenges I mentioned. The other challenge, I think, is that the more successful we get, we get the more open to criticism we are by the NGOs. And that actually is a demonstration of our strength. As chairman, I would will hope to try and talk to some of the NGOs and get them on board. And I'm not suggesting that uh, I'm going to um, concede some of the differences in PSC because those are actually our strength. And it annoys me when people try and make a case that three-chamber model is actually a better government model than PSC has. In my experience, it isn't. I think that our mixed stakeholder board model actually is more democratic than the FMC model. So finally, I just want to say I think for all of us, it's going to be a very busy year. We've got all the standards under development. We are looking to bring in uh, a new strategy. Whether we can meet the time deadline set by then is something that we're going to have to consider carefully because we have to keep everybody on board and we want your views and I think getting the strategy right is more important than being tied to too tight a deadline. And the final area for this year is one which we've looked at a number of times but we're looking at more seriously now is how we can improve our branding message for PMC. So I would like to finish by once again thanking all of you for your support. I'm really looking forward to being your chairman, particularly because I think our greatest strength is that we are all members of the same family. And you come to an event like this, and our problem is always starting off <coughs> because everybody wants to talk together and exchange ideas. And that is a great strength of us. So thank you. Thank you very much, Peter, and I also am grateful for Peter's kind words that he offered to, uh, to us. We welcome him on board, and okay, I'm not sure whether he knows what he's in for, but hey. <laughs> we're there, we're there to offer Peter full support, and to offer you full support um, in achieving our aspirations for the coming period. Um, may I now call upon Mr. David Ford to briefly introduce himself to Thank you, David. Good morning. Thank you very much. It's certainly a great uh, honor and privilege to be here with you today and to be nominated and voted on uh, by all the members uh, for the support of PEFC International. Uh, I'd like to share just three things with you this morning. Uh, first, uh, just an observation. I've been involved in forest certification for over 20 years, and it's really quite exciting to see how PEFC uh, came from its birth to uh, its growth to now a stage of maturity uh, with a very wide range of successes that you all have had as, as, a, as a family. I look around the room, and the diversity is, uh, is really fantastic, and the, the sharing and building of ideas, um, I think is very encouraging, uh, that will help lead PEFC to even greater success in the future. Um, you have a lot to be proud of, and I'm very uh, 
pleased and honored to be, uh, to be part of the PEFC family and to, uh, to contribute what I can to future success. Secondly, uh, I am a small forest landowner. I own some property in the state of Hawaii, uh, which is the only tropical zone in the United States, uh, where I'm doing a reforestation project, um, trying to rehab some, uh, some severely uh, degraded lands back to native forest uh, types in Hawaii. Uh, and so smallholder issues are very close to my heart. Uh, I also am very involved with the American Forest Foundation that runs the American Tree Farm System in the U.S. And so you can be assured that as a board member representing all of you, uh, I will be looking uh, to ensure that the considerations, concerns for a small family of uh, landholders are, are well in, in mind. And, and extend the work the board has already done to ensure that, but to, to further that uh, in the future. And, and then thirdly, um, I'm really pleased to be joining the board at this very important juncture. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, as has been outlined over the last few days, um, but one of the most important pieces of work that is before us, I think, at least from my perspective, is the strategic plan. Uh, ben, I think your, uh, your insight about how important it is uh, to have that plan in hand. Um, it, it's critical if we're going to find a greater success working together as, as a very diverse family to have a very clear, short, and concise strategic plan. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, very simple and clear, easy to understand, um, and something that every one of the members can really get behind and support. Uh, with that in hand, I think it will really help us forge to greater success in the future. Uh, I look forward to meeting uh, all of you at some point here, uh, either at this conference or certainly our, our future opportunities uh, if, if meetings uh, that will be coming forth in the next several years. Uh, I'm open to dialogue with any and every one of you about your issues, concerns, uh, and look forward to working on your behalf. This is your organization uh, working on your behalf uh, to help us achieve great success uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. I have the chance uh, to uh, leave the first steps of PFC in the 90s. I was director of the regional of the Catalan Forest Owners Association and by that representing Spain in CEPF and I could see the first steps of TFC and I'm really glad to see how the organization has grown over the last uh, nearly 20 years. <coughs> I've been working additionally 15 years in academia, in two universities, and the last five and a half years I was leading the forestry department of the FAO, and by then I had experience in several areas and priorities. And first, uh, the importance of forest statistics, and what quoted yesterday, the forest resource assessment of the FAO, and the uh, wood trade and production statistics. Uh, climate change was very heavy in the agenda and even REC was uh, led by FAO, especially in the area of MRPs and inventories. I was engaged in the SDG debate, but we had lots of unpleasant struggles around SDG 15, and at the end we should see to the forest specifically and not under one of its functions, which would be biodiversity. And it was one of the key struggles, especially in, in, uh, two years ago. I've been quite engaged in the smallholder issues due to my previous uh, task and to establish a forest and farm facility which is uh, supporting the capacity building of smallholders, communities and indigenous people. And FAO hosted, hosted the advisory committee of sustainable forest industries with a key player of the forest industries uh, are represented and we work very intensively with them. And then an area that I've been <coughs> specially committed coming from the single dry country in Europe is Ryland Forest. We have a very strong organization, like a tropical rainforest, and then the forest, forest and rainforest of developed countries. And we are overseeing the importance of dry forest, the key issues are happening, and frequently they are out of the agenda. And I think we need to balance attention on forest issues. First, on function, it's not only about production and biodiversity, there are many other things of climate change, but also the social and cultural function, the issues of soil and water, that they, they are like a folly in the debate, but they are much more crucial because without soil, we cannot have uh, forests. So these issues, especially in Iran, should get more attention. I want also 
like to highlight that I think there is an explicit role of NFC regarding uh, certification, but there are much more that can be achieved. I would need a symbol of a very well-known Spanish soccer team, Football Club Barcelona Barça, which is supposed to be much more than a football club. I think PFC can do much more than the explicit role in this implicit. It is, if we let aside new flow in the specific area of research, there is no such a strong bottom-up forest organization in the globe, and we cannot keep just the work of PFC restricted to, the, to its exclusive mandate. It has to be the big advocate of sustainable forest management. Everybody speaks of sustainability, but in fact we have lots of restriction from right and left from those who really don't want to have sustainability because they want the set-aside option, and those who really want to keep the business as a usual model. <coughs> there needs to be a global advocate. Bottom-up approaches are very sane, very democratic, very useful, but we are fighting with very concentrated uh, settings in both extremes. In that sense, it's very important to get this social grip on its like solar energy very dispersed, and we need to concentrate the message much more. So in that sense, I think it's very important. And there is the need to, to advocate for the forestry in the uh, bioeconomy and a bioeconomy that is inclusive to all the regions of the world, not only the most developed regions. We have a huge opportunity for forestry, but we need this advocate for it. So, in that sense, I uh, look much forward to contribute uh, to the board and to look forward to the discussions and the contribution to move sustainable forest management that is useful for the forest dependent community, be it in the boreal zone, in the drylands, in the tropics, or in the Mediterranean regions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eduardo. So, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be an exciting year for all of us. All three new board members have just presented what their vision, or their, uh, the elements of their vision can be to complement the current skill sets on the board of directors. This, of course, will be even further complemented by the skill sets that all of you provide to the board of directors. For this, I thank the nominations committee for their foresight and also their insights in selecting the particular candidates for your consideration. Could I just remind all new board members who are present here, there will be a board induction session this evening. So your official duty starts straight away, I'm afraid. They will begin at 5 o'clock and the board induction will take place in the Ajuna room, which is somewhere like that. Yeah. We are slightly ahead of time. Now, we have another, oh, actually, you know, we have a two, yeah, we're back on time. Brilliant. The next item on the uh, agenda will be the re-endorsement of the Latvian PSE certification system. The motion that we put to you for approval is to approve the re-endorsement of the Latvian PSE certification system. All those in favor, please hold your cards up high. And so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Those against, Thank you again. Any abstentions? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. Let's turn as well. That's another one. TikTok. Good. Right. Now the next item on the agenda would be our protocol for all members. May I call upon Hannah to tell you where you need to go? After that, we will break for lunch at a quarter past twelve. And please could I ask all of you to come back into the room at 13.45 sharp to continue the items on the PFC agenda. Hannah, may we have you with us? Find the microphone. Microphone, please. Yeah. It has been my honor and privilege to have been the acting chair for PFC International for the last 12 months. But I must say that I have been on the board of directors for PEFC International since 2009. Yeah, uh, suatu kehormatan bagi Bu Seam, uh, bahwa beliau sudah menjadi uh, ketua umum atau uh, chairwoman dari PEFC selama 12 uh, tahun terakhir, eh, 12 bulan terakhir. Uh, tapi beliau sebenarnya sudah menjadi anggota dari uh, Dewan Direktur PFC sudah uh, 12 tahun. Sudah 7 tahun anggota Dewan Direktur. I have also been Vice Chair on PFC since 2011 
and I will continue to stay in the capacity of Vice Chair while PEFC is led by our new Chairman, Mr. Peter Latham. Dan beliau uh, juga menjadi wakil, ya, wakil ketua PEFC um, dan akan terus menjadi wakil ketua PEFC selama PEFC dipimpin oleh Pak Peter Latham. The focus for PFC International this year has been quite evident in the challenges that we have been facing for the last few years and we have had some new challenges due to international developments that have taken place I would say in the period of the last three or four years. Dan uh, fokus dari PFC yaitu selama beberapa tahun ini sudah sangat jelas dan kita akan menghadapi tantangan-tantangan baru uh, terutama yang muncul selama tiga sampai empat tahun terakhir ini. But amongst those challenges that we are facing, I must say that PFC International has shown immense strength in also finding opportunities for the better of PFC International. Dan uh, selama menghadapi apa tantangan tersebut, PFC itu mempunyai kekuatan yang uh, cukup besar. Uh, untuk terus meningkatkan uh, peranan BRC dan juga untuk memperbaiki peranan BRC uh, uh, di masa yang mendatang. The very nature of the organization, which is a bottom-up approach, gives national governing bodies a sense of ownership that they own, belong, and contribute towards the development and growth of BRC International. Uh, PRC ini mempunyai ciri yang sangat khas, yaitu pendekatannya adalah pendekatan bottom up, ya. di mana uh, inisiatif dari negara-negara itu kemudian naik ke atas, sehingga setiap negara mempunyai rasa memiliki, mempunyai uh, kebersamaan ya, uh, sebagai bagian dari uh, dari PRC. Jadi skemanya itu adalah dari uh, setiap negara. Today, PRC International announced that our membership has now reached the fantastic number of 46 national schemes. Uh, hari ini uh, PRC mengumumkan bahwa jumlah anggotanya itu sudah bertambah lagi menjadi 46 uh, skema nasional atau mudahnya 46 negara. The intention of PRC of course is to continue to pursue this growth just to complement the fact that we are the largest forest certification scheme in the world. Dan PRC uh, terus ber, berniat untuk uh, tumbuh ya untuk menambah keanggotaannya ini uh, terlepas dari fakta bahwa PRC sudah menjadi sertifikasi kehutanan terbesar di dunia sekarang ini. In the pursuit of the growth and the development of PRC International a key factor that remains at the core of PEFC International is to maintain and enhance the credibility and the integrity of our reputation as a scheme. Dan dalam usaha untuk uh, memperjuangkan pertumbuhan dan perkembangan tadi, ya supaya tumbuh dan berkembang, itu salah satu faktor kunci adalah untuk menjaga kredibilitas dan integritas dari skema sertifikasi. Karena skema sertifikasi itu seperti uh, I will add some more to it. Skema sertifikasi itu modalnya adalah kepercayaan. Jadi sama seperti sertifikat halal, sama seperti uh, apa namanya uh, cap uh, be, uh, tidak mengandung kolesterol. Itu kalau pembeli tidak percaya terhadap cap itu, maka runtuh semua. Karena itu sangat kunci untuk menjaga jangan sampai sertifikat halal muncul ternyata barangnya nggak halal. Ya, aman ternyata barangnya nggak aman, helm aman ternyata barangnya nggak aman. Ya, jadi sekali itu terjadi maka ambruk. Makanya itu istilahnya adalah kredibilitas dan integritas itu menjadi sangat kunci. The core principles of PEFC is based on the three pillars of sustainability, which apply to sustainable forest management. And for us, it is critical that the environmental social and economic elements are complementary and equally viable. Dan uh, apa yang dilakukan PSC itu berdasarkan dari tiga pilar dari uh, pengelolaan hutan lestari ya, yaitu uh, pilar environment, lingkungan, 
kemudian pilar sosial, masyarakat, dan pilar ekonomi. Jadi ini harus seimbang, tiga, tiga pilar ini. Baik, itu tadi pendahuluan dari Ibu Syam. Uh, sekarang saya persilahkan Pak Ben, it's you first or Peter? Oh, okay. 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 okay, Peter. Right. So, I'm Peter Latham. My daytime job is chairman of James Latham PLC. Uh, Peter Latham itu uh, sehari-harinya dia adalah um, chairman atau apa namanya uh, presidir ya dari uh, James Latham uh, perusahaan namanya James Latham di, di Inggris perusahaan kayu yang sangat besar. It's a company that distributes wood products and that's solid hardwood from tropical countries and temperate countries and also panel products and has been doing so since 1757. Oke, okay, uh, jadi uh, James Latham, perusahaan James Latham namanya ini itu uh, terlibat di dalam uh, apa perdagangan kayu ya, kemudian uh, solid hardwood itu kayu apa? kayu uh, kayu keras ya juga panel kayu termasuk kayu-kayu dari negara-negara tropis dan dia sudah berdiri dari sejak tahun 1757 jadi ini dari kakek-kakeknya ya, 1757 I think one of the things that I bring to PFC is a knowledge of the markets and there are two aspects of PFC one is the certification of the forest which of course is very important the other aspect is what we call chain of custody which is making certain that the claims made for wood from the forest can actually be proved all the way down the supply chain so there is no contamination with uncertified wood dan uh, Peter itu mempunyai pengetahuan mengenai pasar ya jadi dia akan uh, jadi bagi Indonesia sangat sangat berguna karena akan bisa membantu pemasaran dari produk-produk Indonesia misalkan contohnya dan ada dua hal di dalam sertifikasi ini yang pertama adalah sertifikasi dari hutannya sendiri ya. yang kedua adalah sertifikasi istilahnya itu adalah chain of custody COC atau bahasa Indonesia nya lacak balak artinya kayu itu berasal dari satu titik ke titik lain itu tidak boleh ada campuran campuran yang e, kayu berasal dari hutan yang yang apa yang tidak dikelola lestari jadi kayak halal tadi tidak boleh ada sedikit pun campuran barang tidak halal di dalam proses mulai dari disembeli sampai dia di, sampai dia di packing itu namanya lacak bala nah ini kayu juga begitu tidak boleh ada kayu yang berasal dari hutan yang dikelola secara uh, secara tidak baik ya uh, dalam proses ini I have spoken about sustainable forestry in many parts of the world and often a question I'm asked is How can you talk about this when you look at what's happened to the forest in your country? <coughs> dan dia uh, banyak sekali terlibat di dalam pengelolaan terserah di berbagai negara dan selalu pertanyaan yang dia apa, ada dalam benak dia adalah bagaimana kita bisa melakukan ini di tengah kondisi hutan yang ada di negara kita. Maksudnya ini sebuah semua orang. And my answer is that um, The lessons we have learned, we feel that a bit, these are being taken on board so that we can have a sustainable raw material in the world which contrasts with so many materials that we <coughs> use which do damage to the environment. Dan apa, pelajaran yang bisa kita ambil adalah bahwa kita harus memastikan bahwa semua material itu itu berasal dari hutan yang dikelola secara lestari uh, di tengah uh, banyaknya kayu-kayu yang uh, ya kalau di Indonesia istilahnya ada kayu Spanyol kan ya Spanyol itu separuh nyolong ya uh, ada kayu Spanyol separuh nyolong ada kayu yang ilegal ya nah, itu di tengah kayu-kayu ilegal itu bagaimana kita bisa memastikan bahwa ini adalah kayu yang berasal dari hutan lestari In terms of Indonesia, if I put my company hat on, we buy products from Indonesia 
and we are excited to have received part of the first shipment under the flaked European agreement with Indonesia, and that is good. But that isn't the same as buying timber that is certified as sustainable. Then, uh, terkait Indonesia, perusahaannya Pak Peter ini uh, baru saja memperoleh pengiriman pertama, shipment pertama uh, bahan uh, kayu ya, produk-produk kayu yang mempunyai uh, flag kalau di uh, Kementerian Kehutanan itu dari SPLK ya. Itu kerjasama antara flag uh, ant uh, flag antara Indonesia dengan uh, Uni Eropa ya. Jadi uh, tapi Menurut Pak Peter, itu tidak sama dengan membeli kayu yang berasal dari hutan lestari, karena uh, flag ini masih di bawah uh, di bawah hutan lestari. Jadi dia lebih senang membeli yang uh, berasal dari hutan lestari. Karena kalau kalau dia sudah masuk di flag, belum berarti dia lestari. Tapi kalau dia sudah lestari, otomatis dia sudah cocok dengan flag. Kira-kira begitu ya, Aninya. My background and <laughs> trade experience. <laughs> okay, uh, Pak Peter, cukup sementara. Uh, okay. um, I'm, I'm Ben Gunnerberg, um, Secretary General and CEO of PFC International, and have been involved with the organization since it started in 1999. Um, it started very much as a, a small uh, European organization at that time, looking at sustainable forest management in Europe. And, but very quickly, it became uh, international, uh, first of all with North America joining, uh, and then the next members after that, actually the first members were, after that were uh, Malaysia and then Brazil, and gradually the, we now have 43 countries within PFC, and this morning uh, we welcomed uh, Thailand, um, uh, Romania, and Macedonia into the PFC Council as well. We have about... 15 countries which are interested in working towards becoming part of this growing family and what unites us all is our desire to see a world in which people manage forests sustainably and to ensure that people can make positive choices for wood and wood-based products from sustainable sources. We are delighted to be here in Indonesia um, because in Asia at the moment, this is where the fastest growth is taking place in the forest certification arena. Um, Indonesia joined PSC and has had its certification system endorsed and um, the certified hectares is growing all the time. And within a very short time, um, PSC has become the largest forest certification system in Asia with over 11 million hectares of certified forests in a very short time, really inspired and driven on by uh, the leadership shown by Indonesia in this region and Malaysia to get forests sustainably managed and certified. Um, then uh, Pak Ben mengatakan sangat senang uh, bahwa acara PFC ini yang setiap tahun dilakukan itu sekarang giliran di Indonesia um, dan kita memang secara khusus di Bali ya um, karena apa Asia itu adalah yang pertumbuhannya paling cepat di dalam sertifikasi uh, hutan sekarang uh, Indonesia juga masuk PFC beberapa tahun lalu tepatnya tahun 2012 ya kita mulai masuk dan sekarang uh, PFC sudah terbesar di dunia juga terbesar di Asia sekarang ada 11 juta hektar yang disertifikat di Asia ya kalau di dunia itu 300 juta uh, dan ini itu karena uh, contoh dari uh, Malaysia dan Indonesia jadi yang pertama-tama itu Malaysia dan Indonesia itu yang menjadi uh, pemimpin quote and quote ya contoh bagi negara-negara uh, lain di Asia setelah Malaysia dan Indonesia berhasil itu kemudian uh, seluruh negara di Asia mulai rame-rame ikut masuk di Asia we see markets looking more and more certified timber um, and we have seen, for example, uh, in, in Japan, the endorsement of the Japanese forest certification system. Um, with the upcoming uh, Olympics, there will be a huge demand 
for certified material for the Olympics. Um, from Indonesia, there are a lot of products which are being sold worldwide by internationally large companies based here in, in Indonesia, um, uh, particularly also paper products, and the demand for that is growing more and more. So what you have created here as a national system is having an impact globally and having a major impact here in Indonesia. Um, certification of sustainable forest management demonstrates, can demonstrate how the uh, sustainable development goals of the United Nations uh, are being met. So companies who have certification are participating in making sure that the sustainable development goals can be met. And I can maybe give some examples, but um, maybe the one I will start on is, is, is uh, uh, particularly the one about sustainable uh, cities, and sustainable livelihoods in cities. A very interesting goal, which you might wonder, what has that got to do with forestry? But with growing populations, half the world's population lives in cities, and within the next 20 years, it will be three quarters of the world's population. So we are needing to find homes and build homes over the next 20 to 30 years for about 2.6 billion people. As Wood is much better for the environment, has a lower carbon footprint. Those houses and those dwellings, if they're built from wood, will have a better impact, will be better for society than any other material that we would use. Uh, I see the, so when you do the certification, who are involved in uh, like uh, reviewing the uh, forest product, sorry, the, the timber product that you certify, right? Like, do you have like experts or like a panel? Mm -hmm. And also like, do you have like NGO, like, you know, like type 4 or World Resource Institute who are picking you up? Also, how, how well uh, is, is the recipient for the certification from VFC in the market? And like, I want to know the map for the uh, pulp and paper uh, product in the world, like, who are the biggest buyer in the world? Can we do this? Thank you. Thank you for that question. A very interesting one as well. Maybe we can do this in parts. We can all uh, yes. contribute. Okay. Now, from my experience as a tropical country that needed to maintain market access in Europe, we have our own national scheme just like IFCC for Indonesia. The Malaysian scheme is called the Malaysian Timber Certification Scheme, established in 1999 through a multi-stakeholder process. That means we have all the stakeholders, such as forest managers, we have industry, we have the environmental organizations, as well as the government authorities, because like in Indonesia, Malaysia, Malaysia's forests are government. So we need to have a collaboration between all four parties to fulfill what is needed in the process of meeting the criteria of the Malaysian scheme. Now the next step for us, of course, was to prove the credibility of the Malaysian scheme in our key high-value markets, such as Europe. We have buyers all over the world, just like in Indonesia, you have buyers and markets all over the world, but the European markets and the advanced economies are the more challenging markets because they demand proof of sustainable forest value. So the next step for us, of course, was to then seek endorsement of the PFC international scheme to show that we are capable of meeting the requirements of an international umbrella scheme, which encompasses forests from all parts of the world. So that gave us that credibility. So the biggest buyers, if you say biggest buyers, Europe is not our largest market, but it is still an important market. So to start at the other end, at the top as it were, PFC has standards and it's what we call a meta standard so that it is one which has guiding principles for managing forests without being totally prescriptive and that standard comes up for review and is currently being reviewed at the moment and we have a process of reviewing it 
by having working groups who are made up from all the interested parts that Sean has already talked about. So that's environmental, social, industry, forestry experts, etc. So that sets the overlying standard. The member country schemes are then judged against that standard, and that is done by uh, a consultant who will go and see that all the PFC requirements are met by the national standard. Then we have another layer, because of course those consultants might review forestry standards in different countries around the world, and we need consistency. And we get consistency by having a panel of experts who look at the final reports and say, is the approach consistent with the other reviews that we've done in other countries? So then, from the point of view of PFC <coughs> governance, we go out for consultation. It then has to be approved by the board of PAFC, and then it has to be agreed by all the members. So every standard that comes up for reassessment, which is done every five years, needs to be agreed by the members. I don't think I miss out any stages. Welcome, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and all this group. Um, so, I would like to start with um, agenda point five dot one, as we have our. Um, expert Xavier Hafner on the screen and it's an early morning for him in Geneva so um, we are now listening to him explaining uh, the year in accounts and the financial situation and then once we have ended with this item uh, both Peter and Charm should be back in the room so the floor is yours Xavier Okay, thank you very much Good morning ladies and gentlemen I will first present to you the report of the auditor on the financial statement of the PFC Council for the year ended December 31, 2015. And then I will provide you with different explanations and additional information about this financial statement. As last year, the PFC Council account are prepared by external qualified accountants. Then the accounts, balance sheet, and profit balance accounts are audited by a certified expert auditor. I will read to you, I will read to you extract of three important paragraphs from the report of the auditors dated on August 23, 2016. The report was prepared by the company Interexpert SA, an expert auditor approved by the Federal Supervisory <coughs> Authority for Review in Elm, Switzerland. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the motion here is we recommend the audited accounts for the period of 1st of January to 30th of December 2015 as prepared by inter experts <coughs> for your approval at this General Assembly. For those of you in favor, can you see your cards, please? Please hold them up high. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any against? I see none. Thank you. Do we have any extensions? I see none. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Perfect. Can we now please move on to the next motion that lies before you on the budget and membership fees for 2017. We have two elements to this motion. The first is to approve a membership fee cap per country for the period 2017 to 2019 at Swiss franc $365,250 per year. The second would be to approve the budget and membership fees for 2017. Can we first look at the first element, 
in approving the membership fee cap. For all of those in favor, will you please raise your cards up high. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now may we consider the second, the second element of this motion, which is to approve the budget and membership fee for 2017. Oh, Stefan, Stefan, wishes to say something. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, the level of fees are calculated for each country according rules which have been decided by the General Assembly. And the budget which is proposed today uh, for some uh, fees, uh, the, the method of calculation has not been respected and we cannot accept that uh, um, some uh, modification or some reduction have been proposed without having before a discussion between the different members. You, you propose at the, before opening the General Assembly the creation of a working group and we uh, are very happy about this proposal and we hope that this proposal will be the occasion for the future to build uh, rules more fair than that what exists today but during the transition period between today and the new period where we will have to define new rules, we have to respect the rules which have been defined now. And once again, sorry for repeating me, uh, we have to uh, observe that rules are not respected with the same way for everybody. So it will, uh, it will, uh, we will arrive to the conclusion that we will not be able to vote in, in favor of the budget today. Uh, from Nepal, I would like to thank PFC and uh, uh, IFCC Indonesia for organizing this very wonderful uh, PFC week with General Assembly and uh, Landscape Dialogue as well. So secondly, I would like to congratulate uh, newly elected chairperson and board and I wish you a very successful January. Now I would like to uh, give some kind of information about Nepal that why we are interested in uh, certification and what is our, our further plan. Nepal is a small country uh, which is located between China and India and uh, we have not much larger forest but almost half of the country covered by the forest area. And uh, during 1970 uh, there was big deforestation and uh, almost forest was uh, barren and uh, there was big hue and cry about the conservation of the forest. And then we have started the community forestry research. With the community forestry, now we are able to uh, bring back green in our mountain, tree in our mountain. Now we have the 19,000 community forest users group are managing 1.8 million hectare forest, which is almost 30 percent of the total forest area. And uh, by the last uh, uh, forest resource assessment report. There has been seen clearly the indication increase on forest area from 39.6% to 44.74% that is because of the uh, community forestry. So this is a big uh, achievement that we have now, but still we have facing a lot of challenges on fulfilling the need of the forest product through the people, through the nation as we had the big earthquake last year and still we are having uh, difficulties for reconstruction and uh, uh, providing the wood and timber for the reconstruction because of uh, the there is a mindset of conservative mindset on the management of the funds. So cutting tree things people be a crime. They would not like to have the cutting tree. But we have the loss of tree of over age, mature tree in the forest. As uh, one report shows that there are the potentiality of timber harvesting 150, uh, 150 million cubic feet timber we can harvest sustainably.
from the forest. And there is a domestic demand, nearly 100 million cubic feet in the country. And still we have the 50 million cubic feet surplus which we can supply to international market. But we are not able to harvest the timber. Even we are not able to harvest all forest as much as we can do. So with this reason, we come to uh, discuss among all ourselves, among the different stakeholders from the committee forestry networks, microphone, family forest owners, iPhone, and private sector, that uh, what will be the convening to the people and politicians to go in the sustainable forest management, of course that would be the forest certification, would help us to convene the people to harvest uh, that is possible in Nepal. So that's why we have started this uh, uh, developing the national uh, scheme for forest certification and we are a little bit behind the schedule but hopefully within the next two years we will have the uh, national standard on place, we, have, we will have the NGB in place and we will have the, maybe the first forest certification in the highest of the world. Maybe the, we can bring to the world that the forest which is in the top of the world would be the PSC certified. That's our dream. And we are dreaming that we will have hold the sometime this PSC week in Nepal and we are very much happy to invite you on that event. So with this, I would like to congratulate PSC and IFCC for organizing this wonderful uh, event here and we have done a lot of things and Hopefully, we will also continue to work in coming days. And uh, with this, again, I would like to thank the uh, organizers. Also, thanks to the, uh, the foundation that we have got the support for developing the national standard. That's, uh, I would like to again for collaboration of the PFC International team. And again, thank you all. Thank you so much. My name is Bore uh, Hai. I'm uh, president of uh, Vietnam Academy of Forest Sciences, vice chairman of Vietnam uh, Steering Committee for uh, Forest uh, Sustainable Forest Management and Forest Certification. First of all, uh, on behalf of Vietnam delegation, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to express my sincere thanks uh, to uh, VEFC organizer for giving a chance for us to join a meaningful uh, meeting. As you may know, us, Vietnam initiated efforts to incorporate the certification into the forestry sector in 1998 uh, by drafting a national forest manage, uh, management uh, standards based on the FSC international uh, uh, standards. Vietnam has uh, set an ambitious target for forest management certification that is 30% uh, of uh, production forest area to be certified by the year 2020. However, uh, at present we have uh, only uh, about uh, 200,000 uh, hectares uh, of certified forest. Our current national policy prioritized uh, uh, sustainable forest management and forest uh, certification. Uh, a number of legal policies have been uh, issued uh, to promote uh, sust uh, sustainable forest management and uh, forest certification. Uh, re recognizing the importance of uh, SFM, Vietnam now is in process of developing a national forest certification in particularly focus on uh, small forest growers. In addition, Vietnam has also actively engaged in negotiation with the EU uh, on BPA plenty since year 2010, and uh, the BPA is uh, expected to be signed by uh, both parties by the end of this year. Forest area in Vietnam has been increasingly quickly over the past 20 years. Uh, forest area is now about 14 million hectares uh, of that. The um, uh, 4 million hectares is plantation. 
Vietnam is one of the leading countries uh, to export food waste products. And last year, the turnover about uh, 7 billion USD. I am very confident that joining the uh, PLC family will significantly contribute to uh, sustainable forest management in Vietnam and address emerging uh, regional and global challenges. It also creates opportunity for us to work together. On this occasion, I am very grateful to PFC International donors and other PFC members who have made great support for us during the past two years. I look forward to continue support from you all. Thank you very much. Thank you to be here to get this opportunity to come and speak on the behalf of the Congo Republic and also on the behalf of the private companies based in the Congo Basin region who are deeply supporting the Congolese government and the different government members of the COMIFAC <coughs> regional uh, forestry body based in Yaoundé to advocate for promoting the PFC standard as PAFC in those different countries, in Congo Basin, in Central Africa. And uh, many of the private members involved in this process are also gathering the experience of the FSC certification. And this is why I'm here to give you an inside view of what is, what is the, the comparison of the advantages we may get. By combining both type of certifications to be able to stabilize our markets at the national level but also at the international level. I'm Mr. Khan, you, and the director of social and environmental issues for the company called Congolese Industrial Development, CID. We are based in northern Congo, uh, in, the, in the heart of the huge forestry landscape which is covering almost the northern part of the country from the middle of the country which is the Quebec area to the extreme north. Uh, the country of Congo is now about 304,000 kilometers and uh, uh, square kilometers and we cover uh, we can say uh, uh, position allocated by the government of about uh, 2 million hectares of forest. <coughs> Among those 2 million of hectares of forest, 1 million and 300,000 hectares of forest are FEC certified. And I can say that we handle, the, currently we handle the most, uh, the biggest contiguous uh, FEC tropical forest certified in the world as yet, as a single company. Why am I here? We are here because we are currently supporting the Congolese government to initiate and announce the PFC the certification process in the country. Uh, the Congolese government has been launching uh, management plan programs to enhance sustainable management within private companies since a couple of uh, uh, 20 years now. And uh, further to that, the Congolese government has been committing the European Union a voluntary partnership agreement to apply for EUTI standard in Congo as well. And further to that, uh, the, code, the forestry code, which is the very binding forestry uh, we say, uh, process in the country, has been adapted to involve all companies, uh, forestry companies, chiefly, to be able to integrate a, certif a forestry certification process. So, the Congolese government, behind uh, one of its uh, members from the Ministry of Forestry, Mr. Tabak Mensens, who is supposed to arrive today, he will arrive noon, and he will be here with me tomorrow. Uh, the Congolese government is deeply supporting the PFC certification process, and we as private uh, companies, we deeply also push the government to make sure uh, this process is being gathered within the country because we believe compared 
to uh, FEC, which is giving a top-down uh, forestry certification scheme, PFC tends to enforce national scheme and to hire the concerns of the different countries at the international level. And this is very important for the countries to be able to handle the forestry certification claims and advocate for their companies. So far, we are aware of some of the weakness that exist with the BFC. As, uh, we, as all we know, today we have some NGOs, and of the NGOs, who are not keen to enforce the BFC in different countries. And we believe that maybe it can be a weakness in really, for example, and the numbers at the national level. But so far, we believe this can be afforded. Uh, we are talking about uh, a level of 5, 5 million hectares of forest land currently FEC certified, and that can be turned to PFC 100% certification. And so this is very, is very, very important. Uh, what we are seeking today in the sub region of Congo Basin, we are seeking to stabilize our market, and we are seeking a mean, a certification mean that can help us to stabilize our market at the international level, but also at the national level. And we are seeking uh, forestry certification claim that we deeply take into consideration our national concerns and help us at affording the international market. Thank you. Thank you very much from the delegate of Congo. Next, could I invite the Philippines, please? My name is Kim Alvarez. I'm with the um, uh, Philippine Center for Environmental Protection sustainable development. This is a non-stop non-profit organization. We operate a community program and we are part of the uh, NGP Philippines. So I suppose not to be here, it should be our government, the Forest Management Bureau. And unfortunately, they couldn't get a travel authority now because our president has you know, a different system of doing things. You know that. <laughs> so at any rate, uh, just to give you a brief background on how forest certification uh, works now in the Philippines and where are we uh, in the Philippines uh, when it comes to uh, promoting the system. Way back in 2010 when uh, our uh, president then, uh, uh, Aquino, came out with an executive order imposing a fine on banning the, 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 the use of natural forest because of, uh, you know, Philippines uh, is one of the most vulnerable countries when it comes to climate change, and I think we are up number six, and, and our Philippine government uh, saw that uh, forest plays a vital role when it comes to protecting the ecosystem. And part of it was actually the, the uh, forest certification was mentioned to identify uh, more or less the, the legal one when it comes to wood production uh, and all that stuff, or wood utilization uh, for that matter. And, uh, uh, though the government opted to, to use forest certification as a policy instrument, it wasn't uh, take off that time until PLC International did an outreach program in the Philippines way back in 2013. So through uh, North Head Company, consultancy firm based in China, they came up in the Philippines and I was part of it. We, we organized uh, an information education campaign how the the forest certification works, that will work, and uh, we invited particularly the Forest Management Bureau, and since then, they, they put together a policy study, they even went to Malaysia, and uh, had an exposure to how, how forest certification works, and uh, as such, uh, uh, they came up uh, with a policy study and then uh, drafted uh, a system. And uh, again, uh, a bit quite slow for, for the government, maybe they have other things to do. So it was only again in 2015 that when PLC International again came with us and uh, we, we organized again another event. And as such, uh, last on, it was only last uh, February as part of the Forestry Week in the Philippines, hosted by FAO and our Philippine government, we officially established the National Governing Board of the Forestry uh, Certification in the Philippines, of course, with the assistance of PLC uh, International. It's, we are very young um, at the moment. We are at the process of establishing the system. 
And uh, currently, we, 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 we got an assistance. We are part of the collaborative fund for the 2016 that the, the PRC is providing uh, with us to, to assist us in developing the, the, the program. Uh, Corner certification in the Philippines, aside from being a market-based instrument, uh, we are looking at it uh, to serve as a, that will serve as a uh, policy advocacy for, for, for our government to incentivize the industry because uh, forestry industry in the Philippines, uh, as we may term it, is it's a sunset industry. We barely have about half a million plantation, and of course our natural resources are uh, natural forests are for protection. So uh, uh, because we do have a lot of uh, uh, very diverse uh, policy in forestry, and somehow when it comes to implementation, that's where we have a problem. And we could see that uh, uh, forest certification. Uh, could serve as a platform to revitalize and incentivize the forest in the industry and to push for the sustainable forest management bill which has been in the Congress for more than 10 years. And hopefully through forest certification it should, it should serve as a platform as an advocacy to promote the industry. And uh, we are very glad uh, that we are part of this uh, PLC uh, panelists that that's uh, you know more dynamic, vibrant, and more robust uh, institution. And uh, in behalf of the uh, National Governing Board, I'd like to express our sincere gratitude uh, for uh, for being part of this family. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Ana Garcia, and I am the coordinator for our regional accreditation subproject support for the PTD in Germany. In this project, the three agents that are working in the development of the accreditation scheme are the Mexican accreditation entity, also the national accreditation organs from Colombia, and finally the Equatorian accreditation service organs, which are promoting between the different concerned parties the implementation of PLC certification in our countries. In order to achieve a sustainable management in our forest, but also that the forest owners can receive benefits for being certificated in uh, international um, Finally, thank you so much for all the support that I have received these three days. And I hope soon each country can have like their own AGV application to be part for this nice for me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mexico. So that ends the presentations or the introductory speeches from our potential and new members. As you can see, the diversity grows even more. So, and we're, we're actually broaching continents now as well. So that, that's really, really something I think that all of you have to be proud of. So we welcome further collaboration <coughs> between all of you and the new potential members. This is, this is Serban, dear BFC friends. Um, first, I'd like to say that uh, this uh, General Assembly has been my first. And uh, uh, I have uh, le learned a lot. And uh, we, have, uh, we have had very fruitful discussion, and the atmosphere has been very warm in, in many ways. And, uh, I, and I, 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 I see it's very good because it is the only way to go forward and, and, uh, and uh, for example, we uh, battle with, with, with FS, FSC. Uh, you are coming a, a country who is the one of the poorest depending country in the world. And uh, as you can see, Things uh, we we think a lot, but uh, speak less, and uh, therefore we have therefore we have video video to you, uh, but uh, we have this video, and uh, on behalf of uh, uh, PFC Finland, we like to invite you to Helsinki, but I I. I warn you that the uh, uh, climate is a little bit uh, <laughs> different in Helsinki than, 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 than here because I checked uh, 
uh, in the morning and now we have uh, uh, 20 centimeters snow oh, in Helsinki. We, we can't guarantee that uh, what, we, what kind of weather we have, uh, we have next year, but we are sure that it is a uh, little bit uh, colder than, than here in Helsinki. <laughs> But uh, you are very warm, warmly welcome to Finland. Finland and I, I promise, promise that uh, we, we will do everything that you enjoy with us in Helsinki. Thank you very much. I forgot one, one very important issue because next year is special for every Finnish because next year Finland uh, will be 100 years old. And, uh, this is this is very big, big uh, and important issue for us, and uh, it is it is our pleasure to invite you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. President. Uh, my first reflection uh, today. My first reflection is about Sweden. No, uh, I understand it doesn't <laughs> uh, My reflection is very important for uh, the exchange. Uh, yesterday, uh, for the exchange for the, all the members, and uh, it is very important for the future. And uh, because now we are more country, 46, yeah, 46, and uh, I think uh, every continent is present and now PFC is a world organization, really world organization uh, with a different uh, forest activity uh, and different forest uh, owner, different economy and uh, it's very uh, important and uh, my reflection is today in Morocco we have the special convention yeah, of the United Nations and uh, before the accord of uh, in Paris and uh, I think so uh, the very important for the history for the question for uh, the PSC and now for the uh, European uh, position for the change in the main change and I think um, now PSC is as well. Uh, it was 18 years. Uh, yes, uh, just 18 years this, this year is adult, and now a good future for the uh, PFC and uh, for the forest certification. All, all the country, uh, and uh, now there's a big discussion for the uh, financial, for example. Uh, and uh, for the activity and the good luck for the PFC and the, uh, for good luck for the forest activity everywhere. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olivier. And right next to Olivier, we have Pedro, who will also lose this year. So I will let Pedro also tell us what he thinks before we move into the next. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, firstly, I want to say that uh, I had been as a member of a family that is, has been great to be part of a family during the last uh, four general assemblies, in the members' meetings, in the stakeholders' dialogues, and uh, with the rest of the board in the, in the quarterly meetings that we have had uh, in the last uh, three years. Uh, for me, it has been a very nice learning process. I have, I, now I understand better what is going on, what, which are the challenges that we have uh, in front of uh, us, with our success and sharing experiences. Uh, I think the most important asset is always said that in that, in that case is the, the person, the people that are participating and they are ready to help each other, that is something great and uh, this has been mentioned, was mentioned yesterday as well by Ben, that is 
this organization that has been made from the bottom to the up, that is something that makes a difference, a big difference than other organizations. Um, uh, when I, when I uh, started to, 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 uh, I presented my candidacy to, to, the, to, the, to the board, I had some uh, uh, purposes uh, to fulfill. Um, after three years, I can say that uh, the, most of them have been fulfilled or are in the process going on. <coughs> uh, I have seen that the, the organization is inclusive. The difference is that, as well, that the decision making is by consensus, difficult to reach. The consensus has been difficult to, to reach, and we have seen uh, that there are things to do in the next future as well. Um, I have seen uh, exercises that uh, have started, the, 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 for example, the branding exercise, and I, I think that there is a using uh, properly the branding uh, identity and the branding. Uh, uh, option uh, being ambitious on that, we think I think that we can uh, go further and we can overcome uh, our competitor efficiency because we we are uh, different, we are better than they are. But we need to show how we can deal with that and to gain market. And that is the difference. I think that we are very strong looking to the forest. We are a little bit uh, softer uh, looking to the to the market. And I think that we, there is a big opportunity because uh, there are places for, for a lot of more uh, certified products. Uh, we can show that we are uh, able to, to convince uh, customers that uh, our products are coming from the sustainably managed forest and their social background there. And that is the, the difference. That is something that we need to communicate better and to go uh, to the market uh, more uh, or focusing better than, than so far. I think that there is plenty of opportunities out there. Um, yes, I, in, the, in, the, in the last years, uh, I'm sure that, that there are some inputs that have been of some value. There are others probably that have not been so valuable. Uh, for me, it has been a, a very nice uh, uh, exercise. Uh, I continue to feel part of the family, not in the front line, but uh, I will, uh, for sure, if you need something from me, I will be ready to help uh, just in case it's required. Thank you very much for everybody. Thank you very much, Pedro. For, for us as a board of directors, it's, it's sometimes a terribly sad moment when we, we lose members of the board due to the end of their tenure. <coughs> because we would have spent quite considerable time either agreeing with each other or disagreeing with each other or agreeing to disagree. <laughs> but very often I must say that as a team, we work perfectly well together. And uh, this year, as I said, I think we are, we are losing four of them, although Christopher Davidson is never quite in our company. But to both Olivier, and Pedro who are here, we will miss you very, very much. We will miss your contributions, we will miss your laughter, we will miss your, your accents and your discussions, your, your antiques, should I say? They're not, they're not angels, these two. But, <laughs> but we will very much miss you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much for all the people. And uh, thank you very much for the administrative uh, work in uh, Genova yeah. for your preparation. And thank you very much, my colleagues, all the colleagues. And I'm thinking to uh, today, two people, Bill Street, okay, Bill, with very uh, good relation, and uh, uh, sorry, I am a French. Uh, I think uh, to the, the first president of PUSC, Henri Plougilon, because uh, now is a with with a band. He acquired uh, the PSC history. Okay. Uh, and thank you, Ben. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Olivier. And now, last but not least, we also owe a ton of gratitude to the people who put this event together for all of us. A big hand, please, for members of Secretariat.
Credit Code Unit. Credit goes to Michael, Johan, uh, Marta, Christian, for projects and development, naturally, Sarah and Remy. For communications, Thorsten, Hannah, marketing, Fabienne, admin and finance to, to uh, Natalie, Jill, and Simon. And let's not forget our regional support also that comes in from Richard, Benson, and Xavier. And of course, there's one more person left on this long list, Secretary General Van Goodenberg himself. <laughs> and I wish to say that with, with having sat on the board and worked very closely with Secretary of Staff for a number of years, it is quite evident how much the General Assembly takes out of all of them and also out of all of you. So for me, whenever we have a successful General Assembly, it is okay that we spend five days from the time of our year together, but I feel that it is one of the most critical times in the period of the year where we have the opportunity to interact with each other, exchange information, and share our own thoughts and aspirations. So again, I thank you very much for being here. And now with that, we close the formal business of this meeting. Thank you. The next not so formal parts of our meeting this afternoon will be the, the uh, presentation of certificates of appreciation to different categories of people. So the first um, category that we have are on the certificates of, of appreciation to outgoing board members. We have Olivier Dieter Coney, who is not here, Julian Walker Payne, not here, Christopher Davidson, also not here, and Pedro Albizu. Japanese Forest Certification Scheme has been endorsed by EFC on 3rd June this year. We thank you very much for your support. On 7th June in Tokyo, certificate of endorsement has been handed over to Dr. Sasaki um, by the President, uh, Dr. Sasaki, the President of the SGEC from Mr. Ben Ganiba at the presence of the Princess Takamado thank you um, who supported the forest certification and congratulated the endorsement SGEC started 13 years ago as an independent scheme in Japan Japan has a long history of forestry near Mm. The old capital like Kyoto, trees have been planted for more than one hundred uh, thousand, uh, hundreds of years. Um, oldest building, Koryu Temple, in, is more than one thousand years old. Japanese people cherished the culture of wood for a long time. In Japan, because of high precipitation, trees grow well. But Japan Cases various hazards like the heavy rain by typhoons, earthquakes, and the tsunami. Forestry plays a very important role in safeguarding the natural, natural land for protecting such forests. Forest certification scheme plays a very important function. In 2020, there will be Olympic Games in Tokyo. Uh, forest sector people are now eager to use timber for facilities of Olympics. We are approaching Olympic committee and the private sectors to emphasize project certificates. Because we are now here, we would like to learn more about the PFC 
and uh, convey what we learned to our colleagues in Japan. Thank you very much. And for this is a picture, we preserve. Uh, this is a Japanese cedar, very typical uh, timber in Japan. So I'd like to present this picture to uh, Ben. Thank you very much. days here at the PSC Certification Week, where we turn our attention a little bit more to the theme of the week around sustainable landscapes for sustainable livelihoods. And I just thought I'd take the chance to, to give you a small introduction to the, the idea and, and the objectives of what we're trying to achieve. Um, to basically give you a really good reason not to go to the beach tomorrow. <laughs> this awesome ballroom. So we have a really action-packed agenda. You will also have it in your um, package. Uh, a lot of panel discussions, a lot of speakers. We're going to see our size as a group double, double in size. So we'll go up to about 200 people. Um, so there'll be a lot of opportunities to share your ideas, to learn from others, to really think, think big and think bold and consider the future of the forest sector and, and forest certification. So. <coughs> What's a little bit of the context behind the, the, the topic of the stakeholder dialogue this year? Sustainable landscapes for sustainable livelihoods. Well, we've touched on it in, in different ways throughout our meetings so far. But essentially, the scale of our global challenges are quite huge. Um, we've got climate change going on and the negotiations ongoing in Marrakesh this week. Poverty, development challenges, really persistent. Ecosystem health, biodiversity, air pollution loss human rights issues, there's big challenges out there. 
And with the scale of these challenges, we also need solutions that are scaled, that are huge. And so that's really the context that we're working in uh, in the next few days. We need to be thinking bigger. How can we deliver more solutions? Okay. So with regards to landscapes, of course, landscapes means a lot of things to a lot of people. We I mean, all have a different way of defining landscapes and thinking about landscapes and picturing landscapes. One of the things that will be coming up a little bit uh, this week is about landscape <coughs> approaches. It's a slightly newer concept, perhaps not new, but a newer concept, especially in the global policy dialogue space. Um, and it's really think it's kind of a, a newer framework to think about integrated approaches which address competing land uses and really trying to find ways to accommodate different land uses in the landscape um, and balancing environmental and development priorities. So in some parts of the world, these, this is not an issue anymore. We've already moved through, we've already figured out ways to, to, to manage our land in an integrated way. In other countries, like even here in Indonesia, these problems are persistent. And a lot of organizations are now working around landscape approaches as a way to scale up solutions, a way to deliver longer term sustainability. So what does all this mean for the forest sector? Um, I think those of us in the room are convinced and we know forest-based solutions contribute directly to solving the huge global challenges. We have the potential to do a lot in our sector. But we need to be doing more. So some of the questions that we'll be considering over these next few days, how can we use the landscape level perspective to consider where opportunities for scale up exist? Where, where is adaptation required? Where does the forest sector need to reposition itself or do more, think about other issues? And secondly, how can forest certification interact and contribute to landscape approaches to reinforce sustainable landscapes and sustainable livelihoods? So these are some of the bigger questions that I hope a PSC family will be present and thinking about and trying to challenge ourselves to think bigger. And I think the things that we should be thinking as a family are really about collaboration. Where are new forms of collaboration required? Who can we partner with? How can we scale up our approaches? What types of innovation are required? What do we need to be doing slightly differently to think a bit bigger and to have more impact? And thirdly, policies and practice. Where do we need policies to change to, to support sustainable forestry? Um, where do we need to think about uh, adjusting the, the practices and requirements and certification systems to be more relevant, to deliver more value? Um, and so these are kind of, the, kind of the bigger questions that we might have in the back of our heads while we're sitting through all these discussions wondering what's the red thread? How are all these topics connected? So, so come back to that and, and keep it in the back of your mind and hopefully on our closing session on Friday we'll have a lot of answers and ideas that we can carry forward and maybe even stimulate the discussion uh, for PSC strategy. And finally, our outcomes, what are we trying to achieve in these two days? Well, it's really an opportunity to share experience and to showcase best practice. So a lot of the discussions will be, by default, on Southeast Asia and on Indonesia. That's not just the topic of this dialogue. Your experiences from your parts of the world are equally relevant and equally meaningful. So really take the opportunity to share your experience, share your successes, and really share this knowledge uh, across the globe. We want to build clarity around an expanded role for, the for, for forest certification and the forest sector. So we won't just be talking about certification, we'll be talking about the sector as a whole. And of course, given our big, ongoing, uh, ambitious plan of standards revision uh, within PAC Council at the moment, it's a chance to reflect and to input into TSC standards, our scope, our dimensionality in light of new knowledge and opportunities. So that's, what we're, that's why we've uh, uh, designed these two days. We hope it's uh, useful for you, and I hope this gives you a nice little introduction to what you'll walk into at 9 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Sarah. Uh, this area of landscape certification and landscape considerations is something that many of you might find rather new or rather abstract even. I must admit, my knowledge on this landscape topic is pretty thin. We're all on the steep learning curve. And in the organization of this stakeholder dialogue for Thursday and Friday, there is a lineup of some fantastic speakers. So I would urge all of you, if you can tear yourselves away from anything else, please do. Please do attend the dialogue and uh, perhaps we could help each other learn even more about this. Okay, so now I have two um, matters, two final matters for your attention. The first one 
goes back to one of the first things I said this morning. I had announced that uh, I will be recommending to the PSC Board of Directors that we establish a working group to look at the funding and finance mechanisms and our, our financial structure. May I ask for those of you who are in the room, the delegates who are interested in this, please step forward after we close this meeting, just so we know who you are and we can start making arrangements for how we proceed with this. At the same time, Secretariat will also be writing to the members who are not present, those, those who are not watching to be here with us, so that they can also declare their interest or express an interest to be involved in this group. And uh, once we know approximately how many people are there, we will then discuss the scope of work and how we, how we take this forward. That's the first one. The second one was the reminder to the board of directors on the board induction meeting at 5 o'clock. Yeah, at 5 o'clock. The old as well as members. In the middle of all that, that is, no, that doesn't involve any of you. So, so, uh, ah, I, I think I have something else to say as well. Yeah, we've got um, breaking news on uh, Indonesian television um, that we're now at 1.8 million hectares of Indonesian forests certified to, uh, to PEFC and that was on the television that's a snapshot for television breaking news earlier on today. And that just going to take you okay. um, This afternoon uh, we have a press conference of uh, Buseyam, Peter, yeah, and me. Uh, we have a press conference with the journalist. And this is from... Uh, Nitro or TV1? Huh? TV1. Uh, this is uh, from Indonesia, kind of Indonesia CNN. Uh, one of the largest news uh, TV and on, at the bottom we have 1.1 million hectares of Indonesian forest uh, certified by BFC and this is a big news uh, not because of PFC here but because uh, this is a news trip uh, on a big political case huge political case where the chief of police announced that the governor of DKI uh, became a suspect in uh, 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 some prosecu uh, prosecution case. And this case uh, drew around 1 million people uh, on the 4th of November to protest on the street. So this is a very, very big case in Indonesia, a very big political case in Indonesia. So millions of people watching, actually watching the police announcement, but they can see PEFC here. So, we are working with the police. Okay, so that's a good one. Ben just asked me to add, and they didn't involve eight at all in this. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for a wonderful, wonderful general assembly. Again, I very much appreciate all of you being here, and yeah, we, we, uh, we did get through quite a lot of things rather quickly. Now, I would wish you a very lovely and pleasant evening and a nice close to the 2016 General Assembly. And we welcome Peter to take over the reins for the coming year. Now, may I invite Peter to say a few words to you just now? Um, the only words I can say probably just would be what I said before, so I'll be extremely brief. And thanks again for uh, selecting me to lead you current year or next year and I hope that you have enjoyed our formal session and I'm certainly very much looking forward to the next two days. Thank you. Thank you very much Peter. With that I declare this General Assembly to come to a formal end. Thank you. This is a, a, always a, a complex element, but I don't think the many elements that we have. One is, of course, that we have plenty of discussion to start now. We have not an effect immediately, which takes some stress in the information that we have in the next few Other element is trying to, to get from the final result. You can have a theoretical very model. Yeah. If the results are inconsistent, then eventually you have to review. So uh, I have. Past uh, review of the results, there are some inconsistencies. 
in their final results. So that may be an element to start from that end. Then eventually to see if um, the, say the basic elements for calculation, the basic uh, building blocks are the right ones, and there may be others that may be more uh, reasonable. And the final element that may also have more consensus building is once these changes are there, and of course there's always everybody is looking where are in the line to construct some kind of a, of a transition. Indeed. Yes. Construction. Yes. Uh, uh, depending on, of how strong at the end the differences are, it can be, uh, I recall, uh, former, uh, former Prime Minister, with all this issue of the green uh, taxes from Spanish and so on, agreed to put in 10 years an increase of petrol progressive. Yes. Yes. Uh, these kind of, of yes. elements also, uh, to move from one model to the other, may be helping. Uh, but what, let's say, an advanced element, what, let's say, I've heard from several is that having a kind of a flat rate for uh, chain of custody is in some sort of way being a boomerang effect. Yes. I would especially bring it uh, from the perspective of developing countries with non good forest products. By definition, if they would have do their work properly, they would have much more than Finland. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very monotone forest countries and very much structured ones. So this uh, is a certain way uh, a, a breaking element to get those who you want to bring on board. So then doing some discussion as to get ahead of searching for more sustainable solutions that are more <coughs> efficient. I think it's difficult if things are consistent and there is a transition period and so on. There's not a basis for, for consensus. Would you be yes. ready to go on the university? Well, that's related to my question for you, Peter. So, um, uh, can we expect then that, that you will, will propose a, 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 an idea of how to get board engagement? My expression of interest is, 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 is I'm, I'm at the will of the board. If, if, there's a, if that's not appropriate, then that's fine. But So take, take that expression for what it is. Um, but I do believe we need good board representation, not to uh, overpower the, the committee itself. But I think it will take both members and the board. Uh, so can we? Wait to hear more from you or from, from you and Ben as a proposal for how we can uh, staff the staff the I think that you can expect a proposal from us in terms of who should make up the group. Mm -hmm. And personally, I think it would be good to have two board members. Yeah. Or, okay. Okay. If, so if, we, if we, we don't have a practice that the any task force or what group taking the support, then there needs to be somebody from the board on the board. Yeah. Board. Yeah. board. But we also have to remember that whatever that task force comes up with, the group comes up with, it comes back to the board, the board then makes a decision on that. Right. Right. So I think what is quite clear and, what, and where the link between the board and the task force is to have a, a, the, the chair of that task force also reporting back regularly to the board as part of the yeah. other committee reports yeah. which we have. So, whether we have several on it or not, I mean, that's obviously a decision that can be made. But even if, even if there is only one, as long as that person really keeps the board informed and the, the, the data goes back to support, it's then with the members to do that. Because ultimately, the decision to take that forward to General Assembly then lies with the board. Yes, that's correct. Just on to the next step. Yeah. So, can we move on from that? And I've got one other thing which really I don't think needs a lot of discussion, but. Um, I think that the timetable that we've set for our strategy review, which is actually really less than a year, even if we come down finally to a one-page summary, is actually going to be very tight for us to I think we need to bear in mind that we are conscious that we have to uh, consult with the national secretaries and their chairman. But actually, they have to consult with their membership as well. And we need to build in that time. And I think that we shouldn't be frightened in this case of setting a slightly longer time scale. That's what we need. And I think you and I, Ben, we're going to look at um, really trying to put some bones on the time scale. And then we'll come back to the board and we can, um, you know, you can have your. Does that sound well, one, one comment on that, glad you raised it. Um, I would encourage you as you look at that time schedule 
not only to think about expanding it, but to, to think about whether or not there's there's need for uh, maybe in, 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 in between calls of this board to, yes. to kind of supplement. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't meet very often. Uh, yeah. and, and the idea of uh, meeting a day or two before uh, the members and trying to get something for the members in April is, yeah. is, is it's been troubling me. Yeah. And so I'm glad to hear you talk about all that's been going. Because yeah. I looked and saw that's a very long time for this board meeting to my next board meeting. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> we would still have a laugh at the end. Good. I'm we need to keep our spirits up. Always, always. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.